Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Tanya Aneja, and I have with me a very special guest today. We have with us Abhay Agarwal, founder and fund manager at Piper Serica. Thank you so much, Abhay sir, for joining us here today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Let me start by asking you, sir, about the market outlook. I mean, right now it's a roller coaster ride for the investors amid. Weak global queues, rising concern over inflation, foreign front outflows, and on top of that, a surprise interest rate hike by the RBI. So, do you think that uh, it is a good time to buy the dip now, or is there more pain ahead? Yeah, I think uh, you are absolutely right. I think the markets have been whipsawed by you know multiple uh, negative events one after the another. You know, uh, there was an expectation that when the COVID wave subsides and the COVID fear goes away, then you know, world will go back to the regular economic growth. There will be catch up and you know, economic prosperity. And you know, people were betting on that. But I think uh, starting with Ukraine war and then the Fed rate hikes, uh, inflation, uh, you know, sticky inflation, RBI hikes, and the FBI inflows that we are seeing have dampened the enthusiasm uh, for. a uh, lot of investors who are now preferring to be on the cautious side uh now in but you know these kind of situations are not unknown to the market you know over last 28 years that i have been investing i've seen multiple such instances where a uh, markets have uh moved from being very optimistic you know 6 months okay. back 7 months back in october to uh, you know being very cautious now i won't call it a bear market yet but yeah there is a lot of caution right now you know people are right. wondering you know has the market found the bottom or how much more is going to go right. um, so our advice to our investors in this landscape is that look if you are if you have been under allocated in equity for some reason this is a good time to start dipping in buying high quality stocks uh, okay. and increasing your allocation gradually though we don't think that this is a time to bottom fish or to go all out and say okay this is the bottom uh, now not more because uh there are still a lot of unresolved issues that will keep okay. the global investors on the sidelines uh, the risk buyers right now mm-hmm. so i think in that environment it's a good idea for long term investors to be judicious about increasing their you know allocation slowly okay. and if you are appropriately allocated then i would say just sit tight and you know probably a time to do nothing and just wait and watch okay sit tight and buy right right sir yes uh-huh. absolutely that always works <laughs> okay and um, also experts are now expecting more aggressive rate hikes from rbi yes. to tame inflation going forward yeah. so how do you see this for the financial sector now i think uh, first of all uh, I, you know i have no doubt that the rate cycle has turned you know i think the okay. rate cycle uh, that we saw going down around covid time globally all the banks global banks started cutting rates uh, flooding the market with liquidity i think that right that cycle has turned conclusively so Uh, uh so the rates are only going to go up from here okay. and they mm-hmm. will go up in a calibrated step wise manner so my right. view is that and the current swap markets are showing that uh, two year swap markets are showing that uh, they are building in a 300 uh, basis points hikes by rbi over next two years so you're looking okay. at a, a repo rate of close to 7.5% so okay. what that means is that for the financial system of course the borrowers will have to pay higher you know the okay. uh, emis and all will increase for sure and it has already started happening we are seeing that uh, okay. uh, secondly for the savers i think it will be good news because they will get to make more money through their fixed income uh, okay. you know investments which uh, they were not able to uh, at the same time uh, for equity investors it will be more challenging because now uh you know the we expect the price earning multiples to fall as interest rates go up so okay. i think there will be some correction in uh, heavily priced stocks mm-hmm. that were you know aggressively priced so i think the market mm-hmm. will gradually uh, go through a process of adjustment on the financial services sector our view has been negative we believe that uh, for banks and nbfcs we are getting into a cycle of a compression of net uh interest margins you know that we have seen over the last two years have been at a cyclical high so okay. they will taper off now and we will see lesser profitability lesser growth from even the large banks okay also it's a new low for the rupee today i mean it's down around 2.5% from march levels how do you see this fall uh, for export oriented sectors like it and pharma yeah i think uh, uh rupee by itself has not fallen it has fallen in 
uh, you know, along with uh, all the other currencies in the world, if you see the yen is at 130, uh, multi-year low, the euro is at 105, 1.05. And, and, you know, if you look at the US dollar index itself, the DXY is at a 20-year high right now, you know, at 104 today. So, uh, you know, the index had fallen to 72 in the, uh, you know, from 72 in 2008, it has now come up to 104. We are not expecting any reversal in this. So we think that US dollar will continue to get stronger, which means rupee will continue to be under pressure. And I don't think RBI is going to step in. And probably it looks like RBI is letting, uh, has increased its uh, uh, comfort zone to a higher level. I, I think rupee okay. can get to 78 also, you know, it won't be okay. surprised. It will be a good news for the export sector for sure. Mm. IT services companies, uh, mm. pharma export companies, auto comp export companies will mm. see uh, will get some respite because uh, they will be able to uh, protect their margins because they are also seeing input. Absolutely. Costs, you know, attrition rates are high in IT industry. Right. Uh, uh, input product prices, API prices are high for uh, for the pharmaceutical industry. So they will right. be able to offset it. So yes, I think. Uh, they will definitely benefit. They will be one of the few beneficiaries, and even companies that are into import substitution, you know, that are that 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 make stuff locally, uh, you know, uh, they will find it easier, uh, you know, to to compete now with international imports. Okay, and also, how uh, does one approach FMCG sector right now? I mean, the valuations are too expensive, and there are still a lot of issues on the demand side. So, it is it the time to buy FMCG or avoid it? We are not buying FMCG companies because we okay. feel that they are exorbitantly priced right now for the expected near term volume growth. So mm. we will see a lot of top line growth driven by price increases okay. uh, because they are, their input prices are going up. So they are trying to pass on some of the hikes to customers. So like in case of Hindustan Unilever, we saw in the last results, mm. there was absolutely a negligible volume growth, but there was a 10% top line growth driven by price increases. And that doesn't mean much, you know, because if you're not growing volumes, uh, then it doesn't matter. So uh, we are we are not constructive on expensive FMCG companies right now. We believe that okay. they will go through a time correction uh, mm -hmm. for probably one more year till volumes pick up or till margins come back. So, uh, so I don't think it is really uh, the time to add FMCG companies right now. Okay, fair enough. And also not to forget the new age internet companies. Yes. I mean, shares like Paytm, Zomato, Nika, they have corrected significantly. Yes. So do you think now is the time to step in or one should avoid, uh, avoid these stocks? Uh, no, Tanya, I think, again, looking back, these kind of corrections give opportunities also to investors who are clever enough to figure out what has got oversold and what has got, uh, you know, uh, and, and find opportunities. So I think in the yeah. names you mentioned also, there are some good companies that have, you know, great brand names and have a clear path to profitability or are already profitable. So okay. I would, our advice again here is, and even our portfolio strategy has been to still look for opportunities, not right off this sector, but see okay. which are the companies that are, uh, you know, beaten down beyond mm. their fair value. Uh, and, but companies that are well-funded, they have a lot of cash and also, uh, they have a clear path to profitability, you know. So mm -hmm. if anyone is not is 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 has got market share only by uh, discounting or throwing money around, we would not invest in them. But if there is a real case that can be made that it's a market leader driven by tech and is profitable or will be profitable soon, then I would advise investors to you know uh, definitely look at them as the next you know five ten year old tier stories. Okay, and which sectors are you bullish on? I mean, your top themes, top sectors. So right? I think, uh, yeah, so we are, uh, uh, you know, we're looking at companies that are, first of all, inflation protected, you know, because I think uh, inflation will be a problem for a lot of companies over the next 12 months for sure. So if you look at companies like uh, in healthcare space, you know, healthcare is still a non-discretionary expense in India. And uh, so that is one space that we believe will not be impacted by inflation. And mm -hmm. the companies in healthcare that use technology well will be able to protect their margins and grow the business. Uh, okay. Secondly, in financial services, capital market side itself, we believe that, you know, still there is tremendous underpenetration. 
and companies okay. that are using technology to service their customers and protecting their margins will continue to do well so companies like you know angel one or cdsl kind of fit in mm-hmm. there in healthcare we have mm-hmm. apollo hospital uh, and then you know uh, of course fnb stays a, a big theme i think in mm-hmm. uh, fnb space uh, india is just scratching the surface so companies like uh, jubilant uh mm. that are the leaders in that industry we believe will okay. continue to do well so i think that's where our portfolio approach is to stay away from commodities stay away from cyclical stories because this cycle is going to turn very sharply and stay mm. with the uh, you know compounding mm-hmm. stories uh, the next okay cycle. okay and so your thoughts on adani group stocks and the stocks you would like to recommend i mean your top bets for our viewers yeah so uh, on uh, the second part of the question as i mentioned that you know uh, our top holdings are publicly known so we have uh, angel one uh, apollo hospital uh, uh, info edge uh, apl apollo and uh, cdsl uh, these are some of the companies that we have in our portfolio and uh, you know we are seeing them going from strength to strength so we are happy to add them uh adani group uh, stocks uh, i would not be able to comment because we have never looked at them very deeply so it's very difficult for me to say i mean as market participants we do notice the uh you know the aggressive growth in the stock prices right. uh but uh, frankly we have never done a deep dive into uh, into the core businesses to figure out what is the fair value and what is the market value so i really won't be able to comment uh, on adani group. Group stocks. Okay, sir, on that note, uh, thank you so much for your time, and always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.